my vision for my life in the future, I suppose, is just me living my life. I'm working a job that I enjoy and that I feel like is actually helping people and doing something good for society, I suppose. Children, house, possibly a pet, who knows. So when I was living at home, it was really, really stressful and just, I had never really felt like university was the focus of my life. I felt like university was just the thing that I was doing on the side and that coping with everything else was kind of my day-to-day -day job. And um, then moving out, because I moved out um, in quite a rush because like family broke down just issues, etc. cetera. Um, I just didn't have any savings and it was just kind of like I was struggling to support myself and that was what I was focusing on. I wasn't focusing on doing the degree. I wasn't able to actually view the law degree as like my occupation, like as the sole thing that I was doing in my life. One of the, the things that's clear to us is that we need to be able to provide more than just a, a, the, the standard scholarship. We need to help students to find places to live and to support them in being on, on, on campus. And so part of the idea of the, the Bob Blair Scholarship is that it will do that. So the scholarship came together. I, I learned through David Dixon, the Dean, that he was keen to put together some Indigenous residential scholarships. Um, and it seemed to me to be such a terrific uh, thing to be able to give somebody the opportunity to use their intellect, acquire a degree, um, and then use that degree. So Beck and I met on our first day, first class in law school in 1992. And um, it was 9 a.m. Monday towards, and we sat next to her, or I sat next to her, along with one of my other very close friends who's also part of the scholarship, Tracy, and um, we were immediately friends and I've been friends with her ever since. I was really impressed by the idea of giving somebody that opportunity and in giving something back to the law school, um, having recognised after all these years what a valuable thing I got from the law school. So, um, and I talked some more to Jordana and to David about how the scholarship is structured and how you pay for scholarships and realised that it could be broken down into quite manageable chunks. So by that I mean when you look at a scholarship and it's $120,000, it seems quite a, a difficult target to achieve, but once we started talking more about how you did it and that it could be broken down into five years and it could be a group of people contributing to the, um, the, a fifth of the payment each year, I thought, wow, well, my friends and I, who all have this valuable degree from UNSW and who have all um, made use of that degree and where we are in life now, could all contribute an amount that seems very achievable each year for five years. We're um, currently, I think, the only higher education organisation that has a contract, a funding agreement with the Australian Indigenous Education Foundation. And for each scholarship that is raised, the funds are matched by the AIEF. So ultimately, one scholarship results in our being able to support two Indigenous students. The scholarship is designed to fund residential, so housing and food. So, so it's really designed to create a stable base from which a student can go on and achieve academically in their career, in their future. You know, law school is a hothouse. It's an intense place. People are very smart. It's very competitive. It's, 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 a, it's a hard driving environment, I think. And to come into that environment, uh, not having come from that background, not knowing other lawyers, not having other examples in your family of people who've gone through that experience, as well as having to support yourself. I mean, it's almost impossible. Before I made the application and was successful, I was, my future was really kind of up in the air. I mean, I'd like to think that it would be in kind of a similar place that I am now, but um, I know it would have been a lot harder to get here. Um, yeah, it was just, it really was a big sense of relief when I got the scholarship and now I just live on campus and I don't have to worry about like supporting myself and all that kind of stuff. It's really much, much better. Actually, I remember when I was unpacking my stuff into my Shalom room because um, for about three months before I, I moved into Shalom, I was just couch surfing, slept in a car at one point, just 
like very, very um, all over the place. But what was really kind of getting to me is that none of my things were in the same place. Like I had um, some of my belongings in different people's houses and um, different people's college rooms and cars and random stuff. So when I was just unpacking my room and I just felt like now I can stop stressing and I just have a place of my own, it was really good. I think this law school is, has always been the leader in the country in, in supporting you know, um, Indigenous students at, at a, a top level top, top level law school. It's been from the, the very start, the commitment to Indigenous education has been in the, the DNA of the, the institution. Look, I think it's a critical thing. I think that, you know, part of the program is not only to increase the number of Indigenous professionals, but to increase the number of Indigenous leaders. And I think Jen has shown real leadership, not only you know, academically and in a tutoring capacity, but in being able to assist and support and take care of other students. Yeah, in five or ten years I see myself working in a, um, either legal aid or the Aboriginal Legal Service or one of those kinds of organisations, because that's sort of the area of law that I'm really interested in. And I just want to make a difference in Indigenous um, communities, especially Indigenous young people. That's just like me specifically, that's what I'm interested in. But um, yeah, it's where I see myself working as a solicitor probably and hopefully a barrister one day. I saw her grow through first year, um, dealing with the challenges of the initial court reports and case notes and things like that that she had to write, um, through to the point now where she's really accomplished, she's really independent, um, and she's giving back. She's participating in programs that she went through herself. So um, I think that that also reinforces for her everything that she's learned and the desire to make the process easier for others who come after her. She strikes me as just, first of all, a lovely person, you know, which, which is, is really nice. And secondly, someone who cares deeply about other people. So she tutors other students through Nuragili. She's a role model, uh, she's a leader. She's a quiet leader though, she doesn't sort of, she's not, doesn't seem to be one to kind of be t t tooting her own horn or out there promoting herself, but she's sort of soft-spoken, but there's um, clearly a inner drive and motivation there and, and, she, and we're thrilled that we can help her out. And I think that um, she's, she, she will go on to do wonderful, amazing things. Every bit of support that you can give an, an Indigenous student really counts and it, it really does make a difference, not only to the Indigenous student, but to their communities and just to like raising Indigenous standards in general. And it's, it's really, really changes someone's life when they receive a scholarship that allows them to focus on their studies and that it's just it's such a relief. And um, so many of my peers have dropped out of university because they just couldn't handle it, um, be it financial stress or other worries that um, really would be great if they could be alleviated. It does make the difference between students being able to complete their studies and not. Um, I've seen students who haven't been able to complete their studies because of um, insufficient um, family support or places, you know, not being able to live in a stable place because they're, because students are couch surfing. I've seen results fall and I've seen talent go to waste and that just shouldn't be the case. Make a scholarship, it's easy and it will make so much of a difference to somebody's ability to get ahead in the world who otherwise may have had insurmountable practical difficulties. I think that, you know, I once heard an interview of Muhammad Yunus who won the Nobel Prize for Peace for his microfinance. And he said, you know, it's a, it's a big thrill to make money, but if you can really make a person or contribute significantly to the development of a human being, it's a much more exciting thing. It's really great to think that the people that I'm studying with now and um, see on a regular basis and are just close friends with um, are going to go back to their communities and make a difference and or make a difference here in Sydney or um, just become successful even if they're not specifically advocating for Indigenous rights or Indigenous health or working in specific Indigenous areas. Just being successful in their own fields makes them inspiring to their communities which is 
really important. So um, I think it's so amazing that I get to be a part of it.